Indeed, just as Shen Lang thought, Jean Hai Count and others were secretly holding a meeting to counterattack the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. The first to suggest a plan was Orchid Mountain Viscount, who wanted to use the heavy rain to flood the mythical Turtle Count's mansion and its lands. The flood would destroy fields and towns, resulting in countless deaths and a catastrophic blow to the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Hearing Zhu Landing's suggestion, Jean Hai Count was also very excited. You, Zhang Chong, keep saying not to act rashly, but should we wait for Shen Lang to put the knife to our necks? Then don't blame us for taking matters into our own hands and seeking revenge. Standing up, he continued, the mythical Turtle Count will have to divert all resources to disaster relief. By then, even Shen Lang, no matter how cunning, won't be able to reverse the outcome. Peaceful Stability Count also voiced his full support. Given that Shen Lang had caused the deaths of so many of his people, he certainly wouldn't miss this opportunity for revenge. Just then, someone in the crowd suddenly said, by committing such an act against heaven and reason, won't we be harming our own virtue? Once the dam breaks, many people will die. Upon hearing this, everyone looked at him indignantly. Struggle requires using any means necessary. How did such a naive person even make it into the circle? Tang Luan then sarcastically asked him, do any of the dead happen to be your family members? The man was frightened and hastily waved his hands to indicate no. Tang Luan sneered, since there aren't any, what do their lives or deaths have to do with you? Zhu Lanting then continued to explain, this torrential rain is rare, a once in decades event. The dam breaking is a natural occurrence, and when the flood comes, it will be blocked by the mountains. At that time, only the mythical Turtle Count's mansion will be destroyed. There's absolutely no need for anyone to worry. After Zhu Lanting finished, Jean High Count slammed the table. It's decided then. Among them, only one person wanted to back out, Northern Guard Marquis' second son, Nan Gong Ting. After all, his father had joined this struggle to maintain military power and for the future of him and his elder brother. But now, things seem to be spiraling out of control in a bad direction. Of course, all these plans were already anticipated by Shen Lang. When he analyzed the situation to the mythical Turtle Count, the Count was immediately plunged into thought. If it's a Shen Lang predicts, the casualties could be unimaginable. Shen Lang continued, For this competition, we brought 800 elite troops from our mansion, leaving behind only women and the elderly. The other 2,000 private soldiers are leaderless. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the mythical Turtle Count was about to issue an order for Jean Mulan to lead Jean Shuring and Jean Hui back. However, Shen Lang shook his head. Above the lands of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion are three dams, impossible to defend against. Reinforcements would be too late. Our only option now is to take the initiative. He then pointed at the map, father-in-law. Here is the Orchid Mountain Viscount's mansion, situated in the valley. We need to strike first. Our task is to destroy the dam above their estate, letting the floodwaters pour into their property. Once the water level above decreases, our mythical Turtle Count's mansion territory will be safe. The mythical Turtle Count hesitated after hearing this, as initiating a flood would result in casualties. This isn't the style of our mythical Turtle Count. Shen Lang, seeing his father-in-law's concern, continued, don't worry, father-in-law. As long as the breach isn't too large, people in the valley will have enough time to escape. We just need to ensure the destruction of the Orchid Mountain Viscount's mansion, submerging his castle. The mythical Turtle Count still trusted his son-in-law's judgment. He then called for Jean Hui, instructing him to quickly return home, lead people to destroy the dam above the Orchid Mountain Viscount's estate, and repeatedly emphasized not to make the breach too large, to ensure the civilians had enough time to escape. Shen Lang also instructed to have Shen 13 create a breach in the eastern Bitter Water Dam, which was uninhabited, to divert the floodwaters there, reducing the water level in the reservoir and securing the mythical Turtle Count's mansion lands. Jean Hui was troubled at first. The dams were built with stone and would take a long time to dig through with just manpower, and the dams were guarded. Even if they could breach the defenses, it was unrealistic to open a gap before reinforcements arrived. Shen Lang, aware of this, asked him, Do you remember my third secret chamber? Go find Little Bing for the keys to the third chamber, then take out the box inside. Just make a small opening in the dam, insert the box, light the fuse, and the dam will be blown open. Also, have Shen 13 help you to test his loyalty. Jean Hui immediately accepted the instruction. Meanwhile, Jean High Count's secret meeting was still in progress. Tang Luan decided to ensure no defectors within, requiring families involved to send experts to participate. Hearing this, some hesitated, which could lead to disaster if exposed. At that moment, Peaceful Stability Count stepped forward. Anyone who knows about today and dares to back out won't be allowed to leave this room. Then turning to Orchid Mountain Viscount, you proposed this, so you lead the way. Orchid Mountain Viscount was taken aback, sensing trouble but said, I can't just do this for nothing, can I? Jean High Count coldly replied, Orchid Mountain Viscount, do you think after you crossed Chen Lang at the last banquet, he would let you off? Recalling the incident at the banquet, Zhu Lanting clenched his teeth in silence, but then stated, I can do the job, but not for nothing. Hearing this, Jean High Count immediately extended two fingers, I'll give you shares for two sea vessels. You buy the ships yourself, but you can join our trade routes and trade with other countries. Zhu Lanting was overjoyed upon hearing 
during this, Jean Highcount and pirates had always been engaged in highly profitable sea trade, which many people were eager to join. Now, by simply purchasing two ships, he could join the route and easily recoup his investment just a few trades. Zhu Landing then declared, All right, I'll lead this task. He then turned to Chiu Xiao, the young master of Chiu family. We might need to use your family's name again for this. At that moment, Chiu Xiao, who was drinking flower wine, readily agreed, Yes, yes, Shen Lang stole my woman and killed my people. I want to kill thousands of his. Tang Luan then reminded, We don't know when this heavy rain will stop. Once the water level drops, the destructive power of the flood will weaken, and we won't be able to completely submerge the mythical Turtle Count's mansion lands. Zhu Landing Viscount, you need to act quickly. Zhu Landing clearly understood Tang Luan's hint, and started to mobilize, after a simple acknowledgement. Soon, all the noble families present sent out their best fighters, assembling hundreds of warriors. Led by Zhu Landing and Chiu Xiao, they braved the heavy rain and hurriedly rode towards the mythical Turtle City to execute their plan, under the cover of night. At midnight, within the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, Mulan was lying in bed, nestled in Shen Lang's arms, worried about the heavy casualties in the upcoming struggle. Shen Lang comforted her. No, the dead will all be our enemies. Mulan then expressed her concern. What do we do then? Will there ever be an end? Shen Lang, propping himself up and looking at Mulan, reassured her. Don't worry, there will be an end. Once we complete the fourth step of our strategy, we can push back the Sovereign's will, and our family will be at peace. To ease Mulan's worries, Shen Lang then playfully wrapped his arm around her waist, his hands becoming restless. Mulan blushed, her mind went blank, and she thought, with her husband by her side, there was nothing more to worry about. Jean Hui rushed back to the mythical Turtle Count's mansion in the rain, found Jean Sword Lady, informed her of the outcome of the Isle of Gold Mountain dispute, and ordered increased patrols. Jean Sword Lady ordered three teams of a hundred each to patrol and guard the three dams to the north. Jean Sword Lady immediately sensed the severity of the situation. Brother, is someone planning to destroy the dam and flood us? Jean Hui responded, if you encounter enemies, just keep an eye on them. Don't engage unless absolutely necessary. Our elites are at the New River Hunting Ground. You'd be at a disadvantage if a fight breaks out. Jean Sword Lady worriedly asked, so we just let them destroy the dam? Destroy our home? Jean Hui reassured her, don't worry, your brother-in-law is well prepared. Jean Sword Lady, your brother-in-law is excellent, but he's terrible. Brother, stop. Don't you dare speak ill of your brother-in-law, or I won't talk to you for three days. Meanwhile, Shin 13 was in his room, contemplating his situation. Since arriving at the mythical Turtle Count's mansion months ago, Shin 13 felt as if he had been forgotten. He mumbled to himself, it's been months, I've been here for months, did Shin Lang recruit me just to warm the bench? Am I, Shin 13, not talented? On the other side, Shin 13's mother became good friends with Shin Lang's mother and Big Fool's stepmother, Mrs. Song. They even started looking for a wife for Shin 13. Just then, Jin Hui found Shin 13 and informed him of a task to be done. Shin 13 excitedly got ready to act. They found Little Bing and asked for the keys to the third underground secret chamber. When Little Bing handed over the keys, she warned them, close your eyes, don't look at my arm. I am the master's woman. Jin Hui, speechless, said to Shin 13, 13, have you ever thought about getting married? Look outside, with the master here, we won't find wives in the mansion. Jin Hui and Shin 13 took two boxes from the secret chamber. Jin Hui warned, the boxes must not get wet, don't open them, just dig a hole and quickly put the boxes in. If anyone intercepts, kill without hesitation. If you can't beat them, run for your life. If you really can't escape, light the fuse and die together. The boxes in your hands must not fall into anyone else's hands, understand? Then, the two split up and hurried to their respective tasks. Hours earlier, Zhu Lanting and Chiu Xiao gathered over 200 elite troops and headed to the Golden Sequence Dam. The Golden Sequence Dam, the largest and longest dam in the New River Reservoir, spans between two valleys. This dam witnessed the hard work and determination of the Jin clan leader, named Jin Su, who spent over three years and tens of thousands of man-hours to complete it. Standing on the mountaintop above the dam, Zhu Lanting looked down at the structure they were about to destroy, filled with jealousy and resentment. Why should the Jin clan be so much more prosperous than me? The more magnificent it is, the more spectacular it will be when I destroy it. As for the lowly people on your lands, blame their fate for being born as Jin's subjects. Soon, your mythical Turtle Count's mansion lands will become a vast ocean, and the Jin family will be utterly ruined, and make the Jin family and Shen Lang regret being our enemies. He then turned to his subordinates and ordered, send out 300 warriors to clear nearby Jin outposts and patrol soldiers. The rest, take your tools and dig the dam with all your might. Early the next morning, in the New River Hunting Grounds Martial Arts Hall, today marks the significant day for the Isle of Gold Mountain Ownership Agreement. Mulan, dressed in a gorgeous gown and holding Shen Lang's arm, made a grand entrance, her beauty overshadowing all present, captivating not only the men but also astonishing the women. Shen Lang felt a great sense of vanity, thinking, among all the noble ladies here, none can compare to my Mulan. Meanwhile, Shen Lang noticed that Zhu Lanting and Chiu Xiao were missing from the hall's guests, thinking, these people really are as unprincipled
principled as I expected. To deal with such shameless foes, one must repay tooth for tooth, blood for blood. Ming Chi suddenly commanded silence with a shout. Silence. He then announced, I declare the contest for the ownership of the Isle of Gold Mountain officially concluded. The contest was fair and just. The outcome is legitimate and effective. The final victor of the Isle of Gold Mountain dispute is the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, the Jean family. From today onwards, the ownership of the Isle of Gold Mountain will permanently belong to the Jean family. The warriors of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion cheered below, while the opposing side was filled with curses, loudly claiming the contest was rigged. However, all resistance was futile. The next step was for both parties to sign the contract. The mythical Turtle Count quickly signed his name, while Jean High Count's hand trembled, hesitating to sign. Our family has managed the Isle of Gold Mountain for decades, and now it falls into the Jean family's hands. Ultimately, under the watchful eyes of all, Tang Luan had no choice but to sign. At this moment, seeing Tang Luan's dejected demeanor, Shen Lang couldn't help but feel smug, thinking, Jean High Count, if you're not satisfied, then keep fighting. Although Zhang Chong looked somewhat haggard, his resolute gaze was admirable. When Zhang Chunhua saw Shen Lang, she quickly averted her gaze, leading Shen Lang to think, this vixen really can't take a loss. She was all over me when winning, but now that I've won a small victory, she ignores me. Suddenly, a sharp pain shot through Shen Lang's waist, causing him to cry out in surprise. At this moment, Shen Lang was in so much pain that tears were almost falling. Turning his head, he saw Mulan's beautiful face still wearing a gentle smile, yet her hand was executing another 180 degree rotation at his waist. The combination of her beautiful appearance and fierce strength made Shen Lang almost faint from the pain. However, for the sake of his life, in the next second, Shen Lang actually kissed Mulan's lips. This move indeed worked as Mulan instinctively let go of her grip, but this was a public kiss, witnessed by all present, causing a stir among the audience. At this moment, Mulan was also blushing with shame, lowering her head. Seeing this, Ning Chi shook his head helplessly. In such a setting, Shen Lang, you dare to take liberties with your wife. How does the mythical turtle count allow someone like you to survive under his watch? After the contract was signed, Zhang Chong came forward to congratulate the mythical turtle count. After exchanging pleasantries, Zhang Chong turned to bid farewell to Ning Chi and the other dignitaries. Ning Chi surprisingly returned the gesture with a bow, saying, take care, Zhang Chong. After Zhang Chong left, Ning Chi suddenly said to the mythical turtle count, I will soon return to the capital and report everything here to the sovereign, but I have a piece of advice for you. With the tide comes fortune, against it leads to ruin. Your family may have won this round, but it likely won't change the overall situation. There's still room to maneuver now, but once it comes to a head-on clash, disaster may follow. The mythical turtle count was taken aback upon hearing this, realizing Ning Chi was looking out for him. He then bowed deeply in thanks. The family's foundation is passed down from our ancestors. It cannot be destroyed in my hands. Better to be broken jade than in tactile. Thank you, Prince Uncle. Ning Chi, upon seeing the mythical turtle count's lack of appreciation, could only say a word of farewell. After that, the three elders no longer paid attention to anyone else and left. At this moment, Tang Yun, who was behind, revealed a smile that was not well-intentioned. Mythical turtle count, just wait for the good news from your fief. However, what Tang family didn't expect was, hours ago, Jean Hui had already arrived early at the Orchid Mountain Dam. Then, taking advantage of the rainy night when no one was guarding, he quickly sneaked into the Orchid Mountain Dam sentry post. When he pushed open the gate of the sentry post, the scene in front of him stunned him. The room was a mess with the smell of alcohol overwhelming, and several sentries were sprawled across the beds. Seeing this, Jin Hui drew his sword and approached the hungover sentries, quickly disposing of them one by one. Just as he was about to proceed with the next step, a noise behind him immediately put him on alert. He then dashed out like lightning, pinning the person behind him against the wall, only to discover it was a disheveled woman. Her hands were tied, her mouth was gagged, and her body was covered in wounds. Anyone could guess what this woman had just been through. Jin Hui looked fiercely at the dead bodies behind him and said, these beasts truly deserve to die. He then said to the pitiful woman in front of him, I will release you, but don't think about running. Pretend you didn't see anything I do next. After it's over, I'll take you out. Your fate will be decided by someone else. However, the woman who had just been freed, suddenly picked up a stone from her feet, and, like a madwoman, charged at him. Jean Hui instinctively dodged to the side, only to realize the woman was smashing the stone onto the dead bodies on the ground, venting her inner hatred with each blow. Jean Hui, standing behind her, could understand the woman's angry feelings at this moment, so he did not stop her. The woman continued until she had smashed the dead body's head into a pole. Then she stopped, panting heavily. Though her rage was vented, the physical harm she had suffered could never be erased. Thinking this, the woman again raised the stone towards her own head. Jean Hui, with quick reflexes, blocked it with his hand in front of her forehead. And then, fearing she might seek death again, he knocked her out with a palm strike to the back of her neck. Without further delay, he picked her up and took her out together. Thinking to himself, what a pitiful person. Moments later, he braved the rain to reach the top of the dam. After placing the woman aside, he began his operation. He energetically chiseled an opening 
hiding in the damp, then stuffed the box given to him by Shen Lang into it. A crooked beam leads to skewed rafters. The Zhu family's pack of beasts deserve to die. I, Jin Hui, am ridding the people of a menace. Thinking this, he resolutely lit the fuse. Then, using his lightness skill, he picked up the woman and ran towards safety at the fastest speed. Just as they reached a safe distance, a huge explosion sounded from behind. The ground all around was shaking. Jin Hui looked back, only to see the orchid mountain dam bursting into flames, stones flying into the sky. At that moment, the entire dam seemed to have been torn open by a giant, and the flood water accumulated from the torrential rain burst forth like a wild beast, raging and spilling over. Watching the scene before him, Jin Hui was stunned. He hadn't expected the secret weapon given by Shen Lang to be so terrifyingly powerful. A small box had destroyed the immensely sturdy dam. Meanwhile, inside the Viscount of Orchid Mountain's estate, the noise from the servants outside startled the sleeping legitimate son, Zhu Wontai. He looked outside, bleary-eyed, wondering why it was so noisy. The moment he opened the window, he was shocked into a cold sweat by the torrential floodwaters. The next second, he didn't care about his appearance and jumped straight out the window, being chased by the floodwaters at a sprinting speed. In just a moment, the flood had swept through the entire estate and territory. The scene Zhu Lanting once imagined of destroying the mythical Turtle Count's mansion and territory was now happening in his own estate. Zhu and Tai, now escaped to the mountain, looked down at the floodwaters engulfing his family's century-old foundation in despair, the shock of this moment causing him to emotionally collapse. Meanwhile, at the Golden Sequence Dam side, the torrential rain was already diminishing. Zhu Lanting had just received the news. The mythical Turtle Count's Mansion Dam Sentry Post was actually unattended. Why didn't the Jean family send someone to guard it in such a torrential rain? But even with doubts, the torrential rain is about to stop. With time pressing, Zhu Lanting could not afford to think too much, and immediately arranged for the returning warriors to dig the dam together. At this moment, Zhu Lanting kept urging everyone to hurry, but manpower could not compete with explosives. Even if a hundred or so warriors exerted all their strength to smash, the solid strip stones only cracked a shallow layer. On the other side, at the Bitterwater Dam, Shin 13 also successfully completed the blasting task, but he was very annoyed. Along the way, not a single obstacle. Just like that, the dam was easily blown open. How can I show off in front of Shen Lang? Will they still let me sit on the bench in the future? And such a huge vibration made Cho Xiao, supervising the Golden Sequence Dam, aware. Just as he was puzzled, a soldier shouted loudly, Boss, the water level seems to be dropping. Hearing this, Zhu landing by the side hurriedly looked towards the water surface. Indeed, in no time, the flood peak indicator of the reservoir was revealed. Seeing this scene, Zhu landing panicked. Even if the rain stops, the water level cannot drop so quickly, unless, unless someone is releasing water elsewhere. At this moment, he suddenly thought of a terribly possible scenario, and couldn't help but panic, his body falling backwards. Fortunately, someone supported him. Having regained his composure, Zhu Lanting hastily gathered his troops to rush back. Chiu Xiao grabbed him and asked, why leave? The water level is just dropping. Even if the dam is breached, the flood might not be fierce, but it can still flood the mythical Turtle Count's mansion domain, right? Zhu Lanting was so anxious that he kept shaking his head. It's impossible now. It must be someone who has dug through the dam at a lower place to release the water. Next, the water level will drop below the dam. Relying on the valley alone is enough to stop it. It won't flood the mythical Turtle Count's mansion anymore. Having said that, without waiting for Chiu Xiao to continue asking, he led his men to rush towards his own manor at full speed. Along the way, he kept reassuring himself. It must be the Bitterwater Lands Dam that collapsed. That's why the water level dropped so quickly. My family's century-old foundation will definitely be alright. Definitely. On the other side, the team from the Mythical Turtle Count's mansion was on their way back to the city of Mythical Turtle. Inside the carriage, the Mythical Turtle Count was asking Shen Lang. Shen Lang, do you think Lord Jean Hai will smoothly hand over the Isle of Gold Mountain to us? Shen Lang expressed. Not at all. And moreover, I hope they don't hand it over so easily. The Mythical Turtle Count was puzzled. Shen Lang explained. This time, Zhang Chong will surely persuade the Tang family to give up the Isle of Gold Mountain and also offer it to Chiu Tianwei. You must know, Chiu Tianwei has always relied on trading with the Tang family to obtain weapons. Now with the opportunity to get his hands on the Isle of Gold Mountain, his greedy nature will definitely not let this chance pass. Once our Jin family settles on the Isle of Gold Mountain, we will clash with Chiu Tianwei. At that time, if Jin family warriors are not a match for the Chiu family pirates at sea, it will surely lead to a bloodbath. Once we suffer a major defeat, losing various investment resources and strengths, the Hidden Origin Society will come to collect debts from us. By then, if the Sovereign awards Cliff Watch Island to the Hidden Origin Society, we will be left with nothing. The mythical Turtle Count was shocked after hearing Shen Lang's analysis. If things really go as Shen Lang suggests, then the Jin family will be completely doomed. At this moment, Mulan was also confused. If the Isle of Gold Mountain is useless to the Jin family, then why did we go to all this effort to win the right to decide its fate in this battle? Hearing Mulan's question, Shen Lang revealed a sly smile. Because, we wanted Zhang 
Chong to make this move, and we aim to take Chiu Tianwei off the board. You see, once the Isle of Gold Mountain is in our hands, Chiu Tianwei will surely be drawn to it. Then, we'll strategically withdraw, allowing Chiu Tianwei's forces to station there. Meanwhile, we will create a commercial miracle on Cliff Watch Island, making it an island with even greater benefits than the Isle of Gold Mountain. At that time, the greedy Chiu Tianwei will definitely send his son to snatch it. When I slaughter his son, what do you think will happen? The mythical turtle count immediately responded. Then Chiu Tianwei will surely lead a large army to attack Cliff Watch Island. Exactly. We want Chiu Tianwei to focus all his military power on attacking Cliff Watch Island. At that time, I will secretly make arrangements, turning Cliff Watch Island into a massive trap, making it so Chiu's forces can come but not return. By that time, Furious Tide City will become a powerless shell. Taking down Furious Tide City and seizing Thunderous Isle will be easy. And once Thunderous Isle is taken, the Northern Kingdom of Wu will, following the example of the Yu Kingdom allying with the Mighty Duke, show goodwill towards the Jin family. At that time, father-in-law, you can submit a petition to the Sovereign, claiming the Jin family has eradicated pirates for the expansion of the Yu Kingdom's territory, and seized Thunderous Isle. What do you think the Sovereign will decide? The mythical turtle count said excitedly. Then the Sovereign will surely confer upon me the title of Marquis, and past grievances will be forgotten, no longer mentioning the new policies. My Jin family will secure its foundation for centuries. Exactly, father-in-law. This is my complete strategy to resolve the family crisis once and for all. Both were momentarily stunned by Shen Lang's boldness. At this moment, just thinking about it made the mythical Turtle Count's blood boil. I never imagined my son-in-law would dare to use both the Isle of Gold Mountain and Cliff Watch Island, these critical islands, as bait to lure Chiu Tianwei in exchange for tens of thousands of square kilometers of land on the thunderous archipelago. This strategy of ruling the sea is indeed brilliant. At that moment, Mulan suddenly asked, was sending Su Chan Chan to infiltrate Chiu Yao's side also a part of this chess game, aimed at taking Furious Tide City? Shen Lang nodded and said, exactly. Now that we have won the struggle for the Isle of Gold Mountain, she should have gone to join Chiu Yao as we agreed beforehand. I have high hopes for Su Chan Chan, although I know she can't be completely relied upon. I also hope she will keep her promise and not disappoint me, her ex-husband, on the other side. Next to the New River, there stood a humble farmhouse. This place was once the dwelling of Zhang Chong in his early years of destitution. Without any backing, he experienced the hardships of climbing the official ladder here, which made him adopt the habit of coming here whenever he faced problems, looking at the turbulent waters of the New River outside the window to dissolve his inner troubles. But today, because of the matter with the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, he returned here again. Could it be that Shen Lang, behind the mythical Turtle Count, is truly the stumbling block in my life? Zhang Chong felt unwilling inside. I, Zhang Chong, am like the waters of this new river. Even if the mythical Turtle Count's mansion is a stubborn rock, it ultimately cannot stop my overwhelming tide. One day, I will break it apart. Just then, Zhang Chunhua came over with a bowl of medicinal soup, and also kindly asked her father to move away from the window to avoid catching a cold. Zhang Chong took the medicinal soup, but his eyes were filled with guilt towards his daughter. For his own career, he made his daughter sacrifice her emotions. However, Zhang Chunhua shook her head, showing an indifferent attitude. Romantic love is just a pastime and leisure. What does it count for compared to fate? What is emotion but a breeding impulse? Ultimately, for that moment of shudder, Zhang, who was still feeling melancholy, almost spat out the medicine he had just sipped upon hearing his daughter's words. Then, Zhang Chunhua asked, Now that Shen Lang has won the Isle of Gold Mountain, are we going to face an even worse situation? Zhang Chong sighed helplessly. As long as the sovereign's determination for new policies remains unchanged, the crisis of the Jin family will never be resolved. You know, to eliminate the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, I could have used the mildest method, but now, I am forced to shed more blood to ruin the mythical Turtle Count's family. Moreover, this plan also involves cooperating with Chiu Tianwei. If it weren't absolutely necessary, I would never want to cooperate with such a beast. Zhang Chanhua was shocked by the realization. So, it's the Jin family who's actually in a predicament. This victory has made their situation even more perilous. Then she thought to herself, this could be a good thing. Once the mythical Turtle Count's mansion is completely destroyed, I can go and sleep with Shen Lang. Zhang Chong was speechless at Zhang Chunhua's comment. My daughter always manages to end conversations with such statements in front of me. Meanwhile, over the Grand Jin High Count's mansion, loud sounds of destruction could be heard. At this moment, Jin High Count was venting his frustration over the loss at the Isle of Gold Mountain by destroying things inside his mansion. The guards outside, terrified, dared not make a sound, especially since in his rage, Father Tan had already killed four servants. Just then, Zhang Chong appeared in the mansion, striding towards the interior. Hearing footsteps behind him, Tang Luan, swinging his great sword and cursing, charged over. But when he saw it was Zhang Chong, he stopped his sword just in time. Although dissatisfied with Zhang Chong's actions, he had to suppress his anger because Zhang Chong was a confidant of the sovereign. Zhang Chong then stated, I've come to understand what Jin High Count plans to do next. Tang Luan bluntly said, What does it matter if the mythical Turtle Count 
won this round. Even if I sign the contract, the idea of me handing over the Isle of Gold Mountain is ludicrous. Zhang Chong simply responded, What if the Sovereign orders you to hand over the Isle of Gold Mountain? Would you still refuse? Jean Hai Count, I advise you to hand over the Isle of Gold Mountain to the mythical Turtle Count's mansion immediately, and all the facilities on the island must not be damaged. You have to transfer everything intact to them. Tang Luan, enraged, exclaimed, Zhang Prefect, have you lost your mind? Zhang Chong calmly continued explaining, if the Jean family gets the Isle of Gold Mountain intact, they will invest heavily in it. At that point, you should sign a secret contract with the pirate Xiu Tianwei, giving him 70% of the Isle of Gold Mountain on the condition that he sends troops to capture it. When they both start a war, the sovereign, who intends to eliminate the Jean family, will not send a single soldier. That will be the moment of the Jean family's downfall. Tang Luan, hearing Zhang Chan's plan, could not help but laugh. Why should I hand over the island? What benefit does eliminating the Jean family bring me? Even if I don't hand over the island, the Jean family will collapse in a year or two, and the Isle of Gold Mountain will still return to my hands. Seeing Tang Luan so uncooperative, Zhang Chong stood up to give him one last chance. The Isle of Gold Mountain must be handed over in the shortest possible time. Tang Luan then confronted Zhang Chong. Zhang Prefect, you, as the prefect of the New River, surely can't control the Jean High Count's mansion, can you? Zhang Chong's expression darkened. If you refuse to hand over the island, then I have no choice but to report to the sovereign and force you to surrender it. The fist of the new policies can change direction and wipe out your Tang family first. After all, you are also part of the old nobility. Tang Luan, furious, grabbed Zhang Chong by the collar, raising his voice. You dare touch the Tang family? Just try it. Zhang Chong, unfazed, coldly stated, Jean Hai Count, the sovereign's decree is about to be issued. If you have the courage to defy the order, try not submitting the island and see what happens. I want to see if your spine is as strong as Jean was. Upon hearing Zhang Chong's words, Tang Luan was so frightened that he stepped back and sat down on a chair. Seeing this, Zhang Chong continued to press. If I were you, Tang Luan, I would hand over the island before the sovereign's decree arrives. This would demonstrate loyalty and cooperation with the sovereign. Tang Luan, whose backbone was certainly not as strong as Jin was. Otherwise, he wouldn't have betrayed the old nobility to join the sovereign's camp. Now, gritting his teeth while looking at Zhang Chong, he made the final compromise and agreed to hand over the Isle of Gold Mountain. Meanwhile, another scapegoat, Zhu Lanting, was still frantically rushing, desperately running towards his estate. Although he kept reassuring himself inwardly, the closer he got to his estate, the stronger the bad premonition became. Now, spurring his horse on, he arrived at the foot of his estate's mountain. Unable to wait any longer, he abandoned his horse and climbed up using his lightness skill. After an enormous effort, he reached the top at the fastest speed. But when he looked towards his estate, the sight of vast waters left him stunned. He collapsed powerlessly to the ground. It's over. The Zhu family's century-old foundation is completely gone. Then, Zhu Lanting burst into a roar. Xin Lang, damn you. Suddenly, a severe pain in his chest and a mouthful of fresh blood spewed out. The next second, he fell headlong from the top of the mountain. One day after the Isle of Gold Mountain conflict ended, the carriage of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, after a day of exhausting travel, finally arrived at its destination in the evening. At this moment, the mythical Turtle Count could no longer restrain his inner impulse, and wanted to share the joy of victory with his wife. Jean Mutsong also hastened his steps wanting to tell his mother that it was he who had turned the tide, and won the Isle of Gold Mountain. However, as father and son rushed towards Lady Jean together, they were unexpectedly bypassed. Lady Jean went straight to Shen Lang, continuously praising him. The reason we won the Isle of Gold Mountain conflict is all thanks to my wonderful son-in-law. She did not forget to belittle her own husband and son. If it were up to these two, who knows how badly we would have lost. With those words, the father and son behind her were immediately embarrassed to the point of having no place to hide. Jean Mutsong was on the verge of tears. I clearly contributed the most this time. I spent the entire month desperately copying and memorizing books, just to gain my family's recognition. Seeing his wife so biased, the mythical turtle count couldn't help but sigh, while also sympathetically patting his son. You've also worked hard. A moment later, in the study of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, Jean Hui and Shen 13 also came to report back to Shen Lang. The woman tied up behind them caught Shen Lang's attention. Jean Hui, couldn't find a wife so you took the opportunity to abduct one back? Jean Hui quickly explained and narrated the whole incident to Shen Lang. Shen Lang was very annoyed after listening. The upper beam is not straight and the lower beam is crooked. Zhu family warriors daring to commit such atrocities openly in the Sentry Post. It's utterly brave. Reason. Then, Shen Lang asked Jean Hui, did she see what you did? Jean Hui couldn't hide it and admitted that the woman had seen everything. Shen Lang frowned deeply, this matter of gunpowder must not be exposed, and the act of blowing up the dam, if leaked, is punishable by death. After pondering for a moment, Shen Lang suddenly said, since this woman has seen our secret, we cannot leave any survivors. Anything we do, must not bring fatal risk to our family. Jean Hui, upon hearing Shen Lang had murderous intentions, became anxious. He, who usually wouldn't disobey, knelt down and banged his head on the floor begging Shen Lang to spare the woman. Then, he turned his head.
bed and urged the woman to swear to the son-in-law that she would never speak of what she had seen. However, the woman was unyielding. She turned her head away without saying a word, refusing to look at them again. Seeing this, Shen Lang also became interested in observing her. This woman has delicate skin and a proud character. Such a temperament must not come from an ordinary family. But why would a woman of noble birth go alone to the vicinity of Orchid Mountain Viscount's mansion? At this moment, Shen Lang noticed something unusual and actually leaned over to the woman's chest to listen to her heartbeat. Indeed, the heartbeat is irregular. It seems her lips are purple, seemingly charming. But actually, it's a heart problem. This is a typical case of heart disease. Suddenly, an idea popped into Shen Lang's mind. He looked serious and asked, Jean Hui, do you like her? The sudden question made Jean Hui blush, and he quickly lowered his head. Seeing that he didn't speak, Shen Lang stood up and said, if you don't like her, then kill her. Hearing this, Jean Hui was stunned in place, and then, tears streaming down his face, he kept kowtowing to Shen Lang, begging him to spare the woman's life for his loyalty. And the woman, seeing Jean Hui do so much for her, suddenly had a gentle look in her eyes. Seeing Jean Hui so unhelpful, Shen Lang was speechless, and simply turned around, saying, forget it, since you caused this trouble, you solve it. Take her home and keep a close watch. If she runs away, you'll pay with your life. Jean Hui, seeing Shen Lang relent, was immediately overjoyed, thanked his brother-in-law, and hurriedly went to untie the woman, making sure to explain, don't worry, I have a sister at home, and you'll have a room to yourself. I, I absolutely won't step inside. Then, after turning to thank Shen Lang, he pushed the woman to leave. Shen Lang, seeing this, was inwardly frustrated. You, Jean Hui, can't even handle a woman. What use is there in the count raising you? After the two left, Shen Lang looked at Shen 13, seriously saying, you've also worked hard on this mission. When things quiet down, I'll personally instruct you in martial arts. Shen 13 internally rolled his eyes. Master, you can't even beat Little Bing, and you want to teach me martial arts? Please, stop bragging. Of course, he dared not say this out loud. After flattering Shen Lang, Shen 13 also stood up to leave. At that moment, the mythical turtle count emerged from the back room and then said, Shen Lang, we both might have thought of the same thing regarding this woman's identity. Despite being defiled, is Jean Hui really qualified to marry her, given her special status? Shen Lang replied with a smile. Why not? This woman likely has had a heart condition since childhood, which caused her personality to be extreme. Her way of thinking is different from ordinary people. To not even glance at a man of my handsome and graceful demeanor shows she likes someone like Jean Hui, a silent but deeply emotional type. The mythical turtle count was speechless. His son-in-law, truly, never misses a chance to boast about himself. Then, Shen Lang suddenly asked, Father-in-law, Fatty is also 18 this year. Why hasn't his marriage been arranged? The mythical turtle count sighed helplessly. Actually, Jean Mutsong and the Shue family from the Martial Peace Count's mansion have a marriage agreement. Shen Lang was surprised. The power of the Martial Peace Count's mansion is even greater than that of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, isn't it? The Martial Peace Count's mansion has always been low-key, but they actually control many islands in the Southern Sea. Though they publicly claim to have only 2,000 private soldiers, they actually also control over 2,000 disciples of the Southern Sea Sword Faction. The mythical Turtle Count told Shen Lang, A hundred years ago, our ancestor Jean Zhou was the master of the then martial peace count, Shui Qian Che, and it was Jin Zhou who helped prop up the entire Shui family. Since then, our two families have been close, providing mutual aid for centuries. But two years ago, they suddenly became distant from us, and stopped mentioning the marriage between Shui Li and Jin Mutsong. Now they neither cancel the marriage nor proceed with it, just dragging it on like this. Hearing his father-in-law's story, Shen Lang felt disgusted. These so-called century-old allies really fly apart at the first sign of trouble. Before the Sovereign's blade even falls, the martial peace count has already hurried to distance themselves from the Jean family. Unreliable. Completely unreliable. Just then, Little Bing hurriedly and flusteredly came to report, Su Chan Chan has come for a secret visit with you, sir. Seeing this, the mythical turtle count very wisely took Little Bing and left. Knowing his son-in-law lacked some boundaries, and some things were better off unseen. Moments later, before Shen Lang saw her, a fragrance of rouge and powder wafted over. Then, Su Chan Chan, who had specially bathed and changed into plain clothes, appeared before Shen Lang. Seeing this, Shen Lang heard hurried over and said cheekily, Chan Chan, I haven't seen you for a few days, and you've gotten thinner, I'm so heartbroken, Su Chan Chan playfully retorted, isn't that because I'm so lovesick for you that I can't sleep at night, so I lost weight, seizing the moment, Shen Lang asked, Su Chan Chan, does our previous agreement still stand, Su Chan Chan had no intention of breaking the agreement, my body, rather than being ruined by a man, might as well be taken by a woman, then she threw the question back to Shen Lang, how are you so sure that after I become Cho Yao's confidant, I won't betray you, don't you want to sleep with me before? I leave, to have me bear your child. Upon hearing this, Shen Lang immediately feigned a sudden realization. You're right, if you got pregnant, it would indeed garner more sympathy from Chiu Yao'er. He then began to calculate Su Chan Chan's ovulation period. Su Chan Chan was shocked. Holy, Shen Lang, are you actually serious? And how do you know my ovulation cycle? At that moment, Shen Lang dramatically threw himself
himself onto the couch. Come on, today, let yourself fully enjoy my body. Su Chan Chan silently extended her hand and firmly pinched Chen Lang, giving him a taste of his own medicine. Then, Su Chan Chan got up, saying, I'm leaving tonight, just wait for the news. But as she walked to the door, her steps slowed, expecting Chen Lang to call her back for some last minute advice. However, there was no call, no word from Chen Lang as she left. On the other hand, in Zhang Chang's riverside residence, he was intently studying a map in front of him. Out of Gold Mountain and the Thunderous Isle, the area of these islands is almost the size of New River County. In this lawless land, Pirate King Chiu Tianwei rules, creating a pirate paradise, furious tide city, truly the lord of the seas. But now, to thoroughly deal with the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, I must take this step and cooperate with Chiu Tianwei. Since there's no other choice, might as well play it big. What the Jing Count achieved a hundred years ago, I might be able to do as well. He then looked towards Zhang Chanhua. Chanhua, I need you to go to Furious Tide City. Hearing her father's plan, Zhang Chanhua was startled, wondering if her father intended to send her to Chiu Tianwei. That beast, Zhang Chong, seeing his daughter jump to such a conclusion, was speechless. Even if I'm ambitious, I wouldn't be so monstrous as to throw my own daughter into the fire. He then explained reluctantly, I just want you to meet Chiu Tianwei's daughter, Chiu Yao'er. Zhang Chanhua was again shocked. Dad, you're not thinking of having me seduce that legendary female demon, are you? I may be good at seducing men, but I've never tried seducing women. Zhang Chong was speechless once more. He told Zhang Chanhua, once you meet Chiu Yao'er, you must establish a good relationship with her and become an indispensable person by her side. Zhang Chanhua let out a sigh of relief. Good thing I'm not being sent to seduce anyone. My charm has already been spent on Chen Lang. Switching targets might really not work out. Thus, Zhang Prefect and Chen Lang's two female generals were about to engage in a battle of wits and charm. Meanwhile, Su Chan Chan, already on the ship and disguised, stood in a corner listening to merchants enthusiastically discuss Furious Tide City's Miss Chiu Yao'er. According to these people's assessment, she was terrifying, especially brutal towards men. She had once skinned several pirates who insulted women and hung them on spear poles as a warning. Moreover, she had been waging war at sea for years, amassing countless pirates under her command, making even Chiu Xiao, the young master, seem less influential than his sister. Hearing the merchant's assessments of Chiu Yao'er, Su Chan Chan thought, to intimidate a scum like Chiu Xiao, she must indeed be a dangerous and powerful femme fatale. But this is good. The stronger she is, the more likely my revenge will be successful. Just then, someone on the ship shouted, Look, Furious Tide City is in sight. Looking up, a bustling city came into view. Chiu Yao'er, here I come, Shen Lang, I will fulfill our agreement. Wait for my news. Simultaneously, inside Shen Lang's residence at the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, he was lying on the bed, allowing Mulan to check the injury on his waist. Seeing Mulan's smiling face, Shen Lang, dear, how did you get this injury? Shen Lang, fearing Mulan's smile, quickly replied, Su Chan Chan tried to seduce me with her beauty. After being rejected, she got angry and twisted my waist harshly. Hearing Shen Lang's words, Mulan's smile deepened, her disdain for the man before her growing. He really thinks I don't know anything? The day Su Chan Chan came, I was eavesdropping outside the door and heard everything clearly. At that moment, Shen Lang suddenly said, Wife, did you write scumbag on me somewhere? Hearing Shen Lang's casual remark, an infuriated Mulan pressed on his sore spot, causing Shen Lang to yelp in pain and quickly change the subject. Wait, 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 wife, haven't you always been worried about Jin Hui not finding a match? This time, your husband has really helped a lot. Mulan, interested upon hearing it was about Jin Hui, listened attentively as Shen Lang explained the whole situation. The scene shifts to Jin Hui's place. When the woman entered Jin Hui's room, the tidy arrangement and the many cats he kept surprised her. This man, capable of killing without blinking, seemed completely different from what she had expected. Suddenly, a shout came from outside, followed by Jean Sword Lady bursting in, leaving Jean Hui scrambling. He quickly told Jean Sword Lady, Sister, please take good care of this lady. I'll go get some food. He then hurried out, leaving Jean Sword Lady confused. Brother's reaction, it's like how the new recruits look when they see me. When Jean Hui returned with snacks, he was again at a loss, seeing the two women crying together. Jean Sword Lady was promising the woman, Red Thread Sister, don't worry, I'll ask brother-in-law tomorrow to annihilate the Zhu family for your revenge. The next day, Jin Hui reported to Shen Lang, brother-in-law, Wang Lian is dead. Shen Lang was also surprised. That fast? Jin Hui informed Shen Lang, Wang Lian didn't die from illness. He set his room on fire and burned himself to ashes. Shen Lang fell silent. Wang Lian was someone who feared death, so his decisively tragic end was unexpected. Jin Hui then handed over a piece of broken tile, the last relic left by Wang Lian. Shen Lang examined the tile and the characters on it, finding it strange that even the smart brain couldn't identify it. It was likely written in a moment of lucidity. He then handed the tile back to Jin Hui, instructing him to properly collect Wang Lian's ashes for burial along with the tile. Once everything was arranged, Shen Lang began to move forward with his next plan, which involved gathering astronomical sums of gold coins for Cliff Watch Island. For this purpose, he visited a secret cave in the mountains he had specifically constructed. On the way back, he also visited
visited Wang Lian's grave, acknowledging, Wang Lian, you helped me eliminate Lin Zhuo and struck a fatal blow to the peaceful stability count's mansion, disrupting the Salt Mountain leader of a thousand households' attacks and harassment against us. Your merits and demerits are balanced. Suddenly, a cold voice emerged from behind. Is that the mythical turtle count's son-in-law, Shen Lang? Ahead, the sudden appearance startled Jin Hui and Shen 13, who immediately drew their swords to protect Shen Lang. A man exuding a terrifying aura approached them, and as he got closer, even Jin Hui and 13, both skilled fighters, felt intimidated. When he reached them, he asked again, was it you who deciphered my meteor from beyond the heaven sword technique? Hearing this, Shen Lang felt fear for the first time, but still answered bravely, yes, it was me. At that moment, Shen Lang was internally panicking, realizing from the question that this man must be Li Qianxiu, one of the six great masters of the Yu Kingdom and the Southern Sea Sword King. Could it be that breaking his sword technique angered him? Knowing Li Qianxiu had dueled with Mulan's master Zhong Chuk and Yen's struggle to soar, both ending in instant defeats, and rumors said this man killed even his own wife for the sake of mastering the sword. At that moment, Li Qianxiu suddenly turned and began walking forward, signaling Shen Lang to follow him. Jin Hui and Shen 13, seeing this, drew their swords again to protect Shen Lang, ready to lay down their lives if necessary. Li Qianxiu spoke again. I've already spoken with the mythical turtle count. Just come with me. Shen Lang was startled. If Li Qianxiu wanted to kill me, it would be as easy as squashing an ant. He wouldn't lie about such a trivial matter. He then ordered Jin Hui and Shen 13 to return first, choosing to follow Li Qianxiu himself. Following Li Qianxiu's lead, Shen Lang boarded a dilapidated carriage. When Li Qianxiu climbed aboard and donned a coachman's robe, his appearance transformed into that of a weathered old man. Li Qianxiu then drove the carriage southward with Shen Lang in tow. Throughout the journey, Li Qianxiu was like a robot, meditating while Shen Lang ate, and even during the drive, remembering the joyful times traveling south with Mulan. Shen Lang, who was normally as lively as a husky, found himself bored to the brink of depression, finally understanding who Tang Yen got his personality from. After two days of travel, they arrived at Southern Sea Sword Island. Upon landing, Li Qianxiu continued forward without a word. Passing by a cliff, Shen Lang saw Tang Yen standing at the edge, sword in hand, lost in thought as if he were a statue. Just as Shen Lang wondered if Tang Yen was about to demonstrate some incredible sword technique, Tang Yen suddenly leaped from the cliff. Shocked, Shen Lang thought, wow, so the lineage of the Southern Sea Sword King, aside from their abstemious lifestyle and dangerous driving, also practices such an extreme method of training by jumping off cliffs. Soon, Li Qianxiu led Shen Lang to a cave and entered without saying a word. Following him into the cave, Shen Lang was overwhelmed by a foul smell that nauseated him. Li Qianxiu rushed to a barrier and tenderly called out a woman's name. Wife, your husband has arrived, and I've brought someone with me. Wife, you don't have to seclude yourself anymore. Let's go out and live our lives, shall we? Shen Lang was astonished. Was this the same cold and unmatched sword king? His gentle voice was even more cloying than Shen Lang's own. Suddenly, a hoarse and aged female voice came from inside. Get lost. If it weren't for you saving that wretch and bringing her home as our adopted daughter, how could our meteor from beyond the heavens technique have been stolen? I treated her so well, like my own daughter, and she still poisoned me, making me forget the contents of our sword manual. Li Qianxiu, and you even thought of betrothing her to Tang Yan. Ha ha, you're truly blind. Hearing this, Shen Lang understood that the woman behind the barrier was the sword king's wife. It seemed that the rumors about Li Qianxiu killing his wife to refine his swordsmanship were false, and clearly, there was a deliberate plot against them. As Shen Lang had analyzed, the meteor from beyond the heavens technique was dual-natured, requiring both husband and wife to practice together. The loss of the manual meant the loss of the technique, explaining why the sword king's wife secluded herself and why the sword king disappeared from the martial world. Li Qianxiu, in a state of agitation, banged on the barrier. Wife, you don't have to torture yourself with seclusion anymore. I've brought someone who has fully deciphered the manual. Our family's sword technique won't be lost. Hearing that someone had deciphered their family's sword technique, the barrier slowly opened. In the dim light of the cave, a decaying hand emerged from behind the door, revealing a woman whose body was as rotten and oozing with pus as a toad's. Li Qianxiu then turned to Shen Lang and bowed. Shen Young Master, I'm troubling you with this. Seeing the situation, Shen Lang no longer hesitated and agreed to help. He was soon brought to Li Qianxiu's residence. However, once he actually began began transcribing, he started to feel overwhelmed internally. This is hundreds of pages of sword manual. Does Li Qianxiu want to work me to death? Suddenly, I really miss my brother-in-law. After two days and nights of relentless effort, the entire sword technique was finally restored. Li Qianxiu, trembling with excitement upon receiving the recovered manual, rushed out without even thanking Shen Lang. When Li Qianxiu's wife saw the manual, she was moved to tears, deeply touched that their family's sword technique was truly restored. Li Qianxiu then hurriedly took this opportunity to persuade his wife to come home with him. Wife, don't live in this cave anymore. It's bad for your health. Hearing this request, Li Qianxiu's wife quickly retreated behind the barrier. Her consciousness had returned to normal, and naturally, she did not want her husband to see her in such a state.
state. Li Chen Xiu, seeing his wife upset, quickly left. Though he didn't manage to convince his wife to come home today, he was still happy, feeling that his wife's mood had improved significantly from before. Meanwhile, in a Zhu family shelter, Zhu Lanting, who had been revived, looked gaunt and frenzied, rambling incoherently in a state of madness. My family's century-old foundation, destroyed by Shen Lang. Zhu Wenhua, beside him, roared, Father, let's report Shen Lang to the governor. We must make Shen Lang pay with his life. Zhu Lanting suddenly stood up, screaming, How do we report? Do you have evidence? Since that beast has left me with nothing, I'll go to the Autumn Breeze Pavilion. I will spare no expense to kill Shen Lang. The Autumn Breeze Pavilion is the strongest assassin organization in the Yu Kingdom. Any target they accept, whether wealthy merchants or nobles, dies silently and without a trace. Not only is the Autumn Breeze Pavilion powerful, but its background is also very deep. Rumors link it with the Southern Sea Sword faction, the Shue family, and even the Third Prince of the Yu Kingdom. The next day, Zhu Lanting, with a fierce momentum, arrived at the Autumn Breeze Pavilion and immediately asked loudly how much to kill the mythical turtle Count's mansion son-in-law, Shen Lang. However, the pavilion's manager directly refused. We do not accept. Xu Lanting was shocked. It's just a minor son-in-law. Why won't you take the job? Don't you know the mythical turtle Count's mansion is doomed? The manager explained. This Shen Lang is always protected by a team of warriors and three experts. The cost of killing him is too hot, and the probability of failure is too great. Xu Lanting quickly mentioned. No, Shen Lang is not in the mythical turtle Count's mansion now, but hundreds of miles away, alone without any expert protection, only accompanied by an old coachman. The manager squinted. Truly no guards with him? Zhu Lanting affirmed that he had people monitoring Shen Lang's journey and urged that now was the best opportunity to kill him. The manager's demeanor changed. I can take the job, but it will be expensive. Zhu Lanting asked how much, and the manager pointed to the top of the list. 10,000 gold coins. Isn't this just robbery? Seeing Zhu Lanting's outrage, the manager smirked. No matter. If it's too expensive, you're welcome to seek someone else. Zhu Lanting, gritting his teeth, shouted, I'll pay, but you must bring me his body. I want to flay him, crush his bones to dust. The manager, smiling, handed over an agreement. As you wish, sign here. At this moment, as Zhu Landing said, Shen Lang was being taken back to his mansion by Li Chanxiu, who had changed his appearance. Sitting in the back of the carriage, Shen Lang couldn't help but ask, Senior, did you ever find that adopted daughter of yours? After a moment of silence, Li Chanxiu nodded. Shen Lang continued to ask, Then, why didn't you just kill her to avenge yourself? Li Chanxiu sighed and told Shen Lang, The girl is the daughter of the Shue family. Yen struggled to soar, Shue Shue, and the reason I can't kill her is that she holds the antidote from my wife's poison, which must be taken once a year, otherwise, she will die. Moreover, Shue Shue is about to become the third prince's concubine. Upon hearing this, Shen Lang frowned deeply. The Shue family is too vicious, letting their own daughter pretend to be an orphan to harm the southern sea sword king. This century-old ally, no wonder they look down on our mythical turtle count's mansion. They have already found a powerful backer and want to completely sever ties with us. Meanwhile, a few kilometers ahead, Zhu Lanting and the master of Autumn Breeze Pavilion had been lying in ambush for a long time. Seeing the scout return, Zhu Lanting hurriedly went up to inquire whether there were any experts with Shen Lang. The scout reported truthfully that there was only an old driver with Shen Lang, and the assassin confirmed that the driver's face did not match any known expert of the time. Hearing this, Zhu Lanting was overjoyed. Shen Lang, today is your day of death. I will make you regret ever offending me, even in hell. At this moment, the master said to Zhu Lanting, just wait here. In one hour, I will deliver Shen Lang's corpse to you. Then, with an order, all the assassins mounted their horses and rushed out. At this moment, Zhu Lanting also mounted his horse, ready to follow. The master was startled. You're going too. This is against the rules. At this time, Zhu Lanting, unable to wait to see Shen Lang dead, roared at the master. I'll pay extra. I want to personally behead Shen Lang. On the other side, Li Chanxiu and Shen Lang were chatting casually on their way. At that moment, Shen Lang suddenly remembered the evaluation of his martial arts talent by Grandmaster Zhong Chuk. And right now, I am following a Grandmaster who is even more formidable than him. Maybe he has already seen through my exceptional qualities and will take me as his disciple. Thinking of this, Shen Lang couldn't help but ask, Sword King Senior, could you please see if I have the talent for martial arts cultivation? Li Chenxiu replied without hesitation, not suitable. You don't have the talent for martial arts. Hearing this harsh answer, Shen Lang was heartbroken. Sword King Senior, you are too straightforward. Zhong Chuk speaks more pleasantly. Then, Li Chenxiu added, your wife's martial arts talent is very high, but no matter how high, it can't compare to that big fool. I've never seen such heaven-defying meridians. Shen Lang was shocked. You actually know big fool? Zhong Chuk brought him to see me. Shen Lang could already imagine the scene of Zhong Chuk showing off big fool to the sword king. Then, Li Chenxiu sighed again. What's the use of being powerful?
successful in martial arts. The Emperor of the Great Flame Empire doesn't know martial arts, but still unified the world. Power is the strongest force in this world. Shen Lang then asked him, Senior, your disciple Tang Yan's martial arts talent is astonishing, second only to Big Fool, right? Li Chenqiu shook his head and said, No, there's another person whose martial arts talent is higher than Tang Yan's, second only to Big Fool, the daughter of Pirate King Chiu Tianwei, Chiu Yaoer. Shen Lang was again shocked. Is this Chiu Yaoer that amazing? Young Master Shen, if one day the mythical Turtle Count's mansion faces great danger, come to my southern sea sword island, I will surely save your life. After saying this, he turned back around and continued to drive the carriage without saying more. Shen Lang, after hearing this, was deeply moved. This sword king really is a cold-faced, warm-hearted person. Suddenly, Li Chenqiu sensed a hint of danger. Immediately after, assassins from the Autumn Breeze Pavilion jumped out from all directions, surrounding their carriage. At that moment, a haughty laugh was heard from the side. Zhu Lanting, accompanied by a few guards and assassins, was standing standing not far away, pointing at Shen Lang and shouting, Shen Lang, you didn't expect this, did you? We meet again. At this moment, Shen Lang was initially stunned, then retorted sarcastically, Oh my, Viscount Zhu Lanting, how have you become so haggard in just a few days? Zhu Lanting, seeing Shen Lang's feigned ignorance, trembled with rage and pointed at Shen Lang's nose, shouting, This is all you're doing. You breached the dam and flooded my family's centuries-old foundation. You really are ruthless. Seeing Zhu Lanting pointing at him, Shen Lang quickly moved aside and said, Viscount Zhu Lanting, don't falsely accuse me. On that day, I was hundreds of miles away at the New River Hunting Ground. How could I have possibly breached your dam so quickly? After hearing this, Zhu Lanting snorted coldly. Shen Lang, stop acting. Heaven has a road, yet you refuse to walk it. Hell has no gate, yet you insist on barging through. If you don't stay in your shell, who else but you is seeking death? Today, I will kill you. At this moment, the previously silent Li Chenqiu spoke up. Autumn Breeze Pavilion, you actually accepted the job to assassinate the son-in-law of the Count's mansion. Aren't you breaking the rules? The master of the Autumn Breeze Pavilion dis disdainfully said, a mere son-in-law is as insignificant as an ant. What's wrong with killing him? You seem to be meddling too much, old man. Hearing the name of the Autumn Breeze Pavilion, Shen Lang instinctively thought of the Shui family, and then said, so, it's your master behind this who wants my life? The master laughed, not exactly, but our master really dislikes you. For a small fry like you, being disliked means a dead end. Shen Lang frowned deeply after hearing this. Could it be not the Shui family, but the third prince? After all, his lackey Li Wenjin was killed by me. The third prince has a reason to dislike me. At this point, Zhu Lanting didn't want to listen to their nonsense anymore. He raised his sword and charged towards Shen Lang. Li Chenqiu, who didn't want to reveal his identity, had no choice but to stand up and draw his wooden sword. Seeing this sword, the master of the pavilion was suddenly shocked, a figure flashing through his mind. He hurriedly stopped Zhu Lanting, who was almost upon them. Stop, everyone, stop. May I ask if you are? Li Chenqiu tore off his disguise and said coldly, I am the person you're thinking of. With the true identity of the sword king revealed, the assassins from the Autumn Breeze Pavilion were instantly terrified. Terrified. The master pleaded, could we pretend that we have never seen each other today? But when he saw that the sword king didn't respond and kept walking towards him, his mindset nearly collapsed. Li Chenqiu, we are people of the Grand Master Yan struggled to soar, with the Martial Peace Count's mansion and the third prince as our backers. You can't kill me. However, this statement only intensified Li Chenqiu's killing intent. Who do you think will know out here in the wilderness? As soon as he finished speaking, without waiting for the master to continue, the sword king pierced his neck. The moment he fell, everyone present was stunned. The assassins, coming back to their senses, scrambled to run away, but in the next second, a lightning-like figure passed through, and the assassins were instantly splattered with blood. In the blink of an eye, all the assassins from the Autumn Breeze Pavilion were dead. Shen Lang was astounded and quickly asked the Sword King, Senior, was that your celestial fall sword play? So cool, I want to learn. But the Sword King only replied, was it necessary to use sword play to kill these people? Hearing Li Chenqiu's words, Shen Lang admired him even more and immediately bowed to the Sword King, wanting to become his disciple and learn swordsmanship. However, Li Chenqiu, without turning his head, said, don't waste your time. Shen Lang, on the verge of tears, exclaimed, damn, you're really bad at making conversation. Then, Shen Lang jumped off the carriage and caught up with the sword king. Senior, will my wife really be that powerful in the future? Originally, it was impossible, but because of your presence, she will not only be as powerful as me in the future, but will even surpass me. Shen Lang, overjoyed by the sword king's praise, cried with happiness. Senior sword king, you're really good at conversation. At this moment, Li Chenqiu walked towards Zhu Lanting. Although the guards attempted to resist, their efforts were in vain. Li Chenqiu's sword moved swiftly, killing all without even a hint of a sword flourish being visible. Zhu Lanting watched everything in terror. As the sword king approached, he trembled and retreated. When the wooden sword was placed on Zhu Lanting's neck, he collapsed, kneeling before them, begging the sword king to spare him. However, Li Chenqiu sighed and told Shen Lang, I can't kill this man. Shen Lang was stunned. Why? Li Chenqiu explained, I come from humble origins, so I've always felt inferior in the presence of nobles. The thought of killing
killing a noble feels like opposing the royal authority of the entire country, so I can't bring myself to do it. Shen Lang was speechless internally. Senior, how can you maintain such a cold and ruthless facade while saying something so cowardly? Zhu Lanting, hearing this, was overjoyed. Yes, yes, I am a banner of the sovereign's new policy. Who dares to kill me? Who dares? Following this, Shen Lang stepped forward and said, No worries. If senior you can't kill him, then I'll do it. Zhu Lanting was stunned. Young Master Shen, young Master Shen, I was wrong. Please don't kill me. I promise. I swear I'll never oppose you again. At this moment, all his dignity and arrogance were gone. He kept kowtowing to Shen Lang, begging for his life. However, Shen Lang took out a small bottle and taunted Zhu Lanting one last time. You are even worse than Tianheng. Such a lack of backbone really disgraces the nobility. After saying this, he pinched Zhu Lanting's mouth open and poured the liquid from the bottle into it. Instantly, Zhu Lanting felt as if his mouth to his internal organs were being scorched by fire, enduring unbearable pain. This pain and his cries of agony lasted for a quarter of an hour before he finally died in agony. Then, Shen Lang began to personally arrange the scene. Li Qin Chiu was puzzled. You should know that if I had acted, even if you arranged the scene to look like a mutual fight, it wouldn't fool anyone. Shen Lang explained, for cases like this, everyone knows who did it, but there needs to be some explanation. Having a false answer is better than no answer at all, otherwise, wouldn't it make things difficult for some people? An hour later, the two continued their journey northward, and Shen Lang started his verbal barrage again. Senior, have you ever seen Chiu Yao'er? I heard she's stunningly beautiful. Li Qin Chiu hesitated for a moment before saying, I don't know how to describe her. Shen Lang quickly continued to ask, I heard she likes women. Is that true? The Sword King, not good at gossiping about others behind their backs, could only respond that he really didn't know. But then, Shen Lang started gossiping about other things behind the Sword King's back. Finally, Li Qin Chiu simply meditated while driving the carriage, ignoring Shen Lang. Ah, no wonder he chose Tang Yan as his disciple, because he doesn't like to talk. At the same time, the mythical Turtle Count's mansion also welcomed an uninvited guest, the legitimate daughter of the Martial Peace Count's mansion, Xue Li, who is also the fiancé of Jean Mutsong in name. This time, Xue Li's visit led the mythical Turtle Count to somewhat guess the intention of the Martial Peace Count's mansion, but the Jean family's hospitality was still without fault. However, Xue Li's arrogant demeanor was quite off-putting. Upon her arrival, she skipped the basic courtesies and went straight to the point with the mythical Turtle Count. I have come here to call off the engagement. Upon hearing this, the faces of everyone in the mythical Turtle Count's mansion darkened. What does your Xue family mean by this? So direct, calling off the engagement without even bothering to find an excuse. What do you take our Jean family for? Seeing their reaction, Xue Li casually performed a courtesy and said, My parents have long wanted to call off the engagement but couldn't find a reason. And now that I've reached a marriageable age, I took the initiative to come here and end it. To avoid making it too embarrassing for both families, I request that the mythical Turtle Count personally come to our house to dissolve the marriage contract. Jean Mutsong's face turned red with rage, his eyes bloodshot. Being called off the engagement was a humiliation he had never faced before. Xue Li looked at Jean Mutsong with disdain and contempt in her eyes. You think you, a waste fat pig, are worthy of marrying me? Keep dreaming. It's like a toad lusting after a swan's flesh. I, Xue Li, am the adopted daughter of the kind consort, a genius noblewoman. My ideal partner is the son of the West Guard Marquis, the current martial champion. Any single hair of his is more noble than you. Jean Mutsong, you fat pig. The Zhong family of the West Guard Marquis Mansion in Yu Kingdom ranks as the second oldest noble family, the second military giant, and a true warlord. The West Guard Border Army of Yu Kingdom, facing the state of Chu, almost entirely comes from the West Guard Grand Marshal Mansion, which is practically synonymous with the West Guard Marquis Mansion. The kind consort, coming from the West Guard Marquis Mansion and also being the mother of the Third Prince, has the backing of the Jing family, which gives the Third Prince the confidence to contend with the Crown Prince. At this moment, Jean Mutsong, holding back the rage about to burst forth, stood in front of Xue Li, grinding his teeth, and said, Xue Li, remember this, fortunes can change in 30 years. My brother-in-law will definitely not let your Shua family off. The next second, tears streamed down his face, and he turned around and ran out. Jean Mulan was speechless. You threaten while crying and run away right after. It would have been better not to say anything at all. And Shue Li didn't take Jean Mutsong's words seriously at all. She directly gave a formal goodbye to the mythical turtle count, saying, I have delivered the message, so I will take my leave now. After saying this, she left the mythical turtle count's mansion without looking back. Jean Mulan watched Shue Li leave without saying anything. She knew Shen Lang cherished this little brother-in-law the most. It was okay for family members to bully Jean Mutsong, but not for outsiders. It seems the Shue family is in for some trouble. At the docks of Furious Tide City, Su Chan Chan had been waiting for days and finally saw Chiu Yao'er returning from her expedition. The dock was packed with people, making it difficult for Su Chan Chan to move forward. Suddenly, someone shouted, Look, Miss Chiu is coming out. When Su Chan Chan looked up, she was stunned by the figure in front of her. On the deck stood a tall, majestic woman, surrounded by numerous
numerous bloodstained sacks, her trophies. This woman, known as the female pirate and called the blood demon, Chiu Yaur, exuded an overwhelming presence, especially with the twin swords on her back. Su Chan Chan was mesmerized, finding this woman incredibly attractive, to the point where even she, a straight woman, was moved. As Chiu Yaur walked through the crowd, Su Chan Chan could feel her powerful aura even from a distance. Now, Su Chan Chan faced a dilemma because the real Chiu Yaur was nothing like she had imagined. How could she infiltrate Chiu Yaur's side and become an indispensable person to her? At that moment, a personal maid handed Chiu Yaur a secret letter. Upon opening it, it read, Daughter of New River Prefect Zhang Chong. Two quarters of an hour later, at Chiu Yaur's residence for receiving guests, Zhang Chunhua, who had just seen Chiu Yaur, was also taken aback by the beauty and aura of the woman before her. Zhang Chunhua confidently said, Miss Chiu, I have a plan to help you defeat Chiu Xiao, become the young master of Furious Tide City within six months, ascend to the throne of Furious Tide City within two years, unify the Eastern Seas in three years, and achieve a Marquis 8 as a woman within five years. Zhang Chunhua knew that as a strategist, it was crucial to be direct, impress the listener, and speak to their deepest desires before proceeding with the discussion. However, Chiu Yaur didn't play by the expected rules. Not interested, send the guest away. Zhang Chunhua was confusedly escorted out by the guards. Half an hour later, a maid announced that Su Chan Chan, the daughter of the dying family Su, requested an audience. Upon seeing Chiu Yaur, Su Chan Chan put on a pitiful and delicate demeanor, tears in her eyes. She recounted her hardships. Then, she coyly crawled towards Chiu Yaur, confessing she was attracted to the general from the first glance and wished to stay by her side forever to serve her. However, Chiu Yaur responded indifferently, I don't like women. Then, Su Chan Chan was picked up by the guards, ready to be thrown out of the city. In the next second, realizing her situation, Su Chan Chan struggled free from the guards and ran towards Chiu Yaur, kneeling before her and crying, General, I am really at my wit's end. Please save me. After speaking, she couldn't resist touching Chiu Yaur's sexy thigh, marveling at how the skin of this female demon was even better than her own. Chiu Yaur then said, I've heard about your situation. I didn't expect you to still be alive. I can take you in, but you'll have to live with the other women I've rescued. Su Chan Chan immediately thought this wouldn't do. Her goal was to become indispensable to Chiu Yaur. She then pitifully said, I've been terrified these past few days. Now, I only feel safe by your side, General. Chiu Yaur asked, Can you cook, wash clothes, serve tea, and pour water? Su Chan Chan quickly replied, I can learn all these. Chiu Yaur was unimpressed. Everyone who stays by my side has some skills. What use do I have for you, Su Chan Chan? If you can do nothing, Su Chan Chan hurriedly said, My best skill is managing accounts. She thought if she could manage Chiu Yaur's accounts, she would definitely become her confidant. But Chiu Yaur poured cold water on her plans again. I only deal with killing and looting. There are no accounts to manage. Su Chan Chan was shocked. No accounts to manage? Then where do all the treasures you loot every day go? But before she could ask, Chiu Yaur impatiently said, Since you're useless at everything, go sweep the yard. Following her words, two guards approached Su Chan Chan again, leaving her on the verge of tears. Moments later, Su Chan Chan, broom in hand, appeared in the backyard. This is ridiculous. I came here to be a femme fatale, and now I've somehow become a janitor. Looking around, she thought, wow, the competition for this position is fierce. There are more beautiful women sweeping here than in the Sovereign's harem. At the main mansion of Furious Tide City, today, Count Jean Hai, Tang Luan, following Zhang Chang's instructions, came to propose a marriage alliance with the pirate king Chiu Tianwei. Chiu Tianwei, as if he had heard the world's biggest joke, let out a terrifying laugh, then his expression darkened as he said, why would a noble like you want to form a marriage alliance with a pirate like me? Tang Luan explained, you are not just any pirate but the ruler of order in these seas. Both the third prince and the crown prince are seeking your alliance. If you agree, you could be the future Marquis of Furious Tides. Hearing this, Chiu Tianwei was naturally pleased, then asked, are you planning for my son to marry your daughter? Count Jin Hai shook his head. No, I want my son to marry your daughter, Chiu Yaur. Chiu Tianwei snorted coldly, it would be easy if it were about my son getting married, but my daughter's marriage is not something I can dictate. Seeing this, Tang Luan began to flatter, Marquis of Furious Tides, marriages among nobility are usually decided by the parents. If you agree, I am willing to offer 50% of the Isle of Gold Mountain as a dowry. What do you think? Chiu Tianwei laughed out loud, Count Jin Hai, have you forgotten? Your Isle of Gold Mountain has already been lost to the Jin family. Tang Luan waved his hand dismissively, it's just a contract. Even if I don't hand over the island, what can Jin would do to me? But, Marquis of Furious Tides, although you are invincible at sea, you can't lay a finger on land. And now, there is a rare opportunity. With the Isle of Gold Mountain, you can use it as a springboard to enter the land. Compared to the Jin family, the Sovereign would definitely prefer you to be the island lord. Then, the Jin family's Cliff Watch Island would also be easily within your reach. Hearing Tang Luan's words, Chiu Tianwei was tempted. Chiu Tianwei asked, Tell me, how many troops do you need me to station on the Isle of Gold Mountain? Seeing Chiu Tianwei's agreement, Tang Luan immediately said, 5,000 troops.
troops because only that many can resist the mythical Turtle Count's army and the mining and production will still be completed by my family. Tang Wulin was clear in his mind, the Jin family doesn't know when they will fall and I'm not going to listen to Zhang Chang's words and hand over all the islands to Chiu Tianwei. However, Chiu Tianwei sneered, I want 70%. Tang Wulin's face changed as he shouted, Marquis of Furious Tides, you are just dispatching troops to guard the island. Isn't half of the profits enough? Chiu Tianwei then showed a terrifyingly greedy smile, Count Jin Hai, if you don't agree, then I'll just wait for you to hand over the Isle of Gold Mountain and then take the island myself. By then, I can take everything. As for the miners, don't forget, what Furious Tide City doesn't lack is slaves. At this moment, Tang Wulin was grinding his teeth in frustration but dared not express his anger. He then said, fine, 70% it is, let's sign the contract. A barbaric pirate like Chiu Tianwei wouldn't sign any worthless agreement with him. As for the marriage alliance, he had only temporarily agreed, but he was curious about which son Tang Wulin would have married his daughter. When Tang Wulin mentioned it would be his heir, Tang Yun, Chiu Tianwei asked, doesn't he already have a betrothal? It can be an old, Chiu Tianwei mocked. It seems that you so-called nobles are only honest in words, but don't actually follow the rules. He then ordered, all brothers, on my command, gather 5,000 men and prepare the ships. We're heading to the Isle of Gold Mountain. On the other side, Sword King Li Chenchio had escorted Shen Lang into the territory of New River County. Senior, let's stay at the New River official inn tonight. No more sleeping in the carriage. I, the son-in-law, have money. Entering the inn, Shen Lang shouted, I, Shen Lang, the son-in-law of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, demand the best room for myself, and this building shall not accommodate anyone else. Officials hurried to accommodate the arrival of God of Wealth, though Li Chenxiu felt Shen Lang was being too ostentatious, which could easily bring trouble. However, Shen Lang was unconcerned, confident in his protection by the Southern Sea Sword King. As night fell, Shen Lang settled into the most luxurious room at the inn, while Li Chenxiu, disliking official residences, chose to sleep in the carriage again. But just as Shen Lang fell asleep, a haughty woman's voice came from outside. A groggy Shen Lang heard someone shouting, Shen Lang, a mere son-in-law, dares to occupy the best suite in the official inn? I, Shueli, don't even regard the mythical turtle count highly, let alone a trivial son-in-law. When Shen Lang, dressed and out of the room, saw a woman standing in the courtyard, ranting like a shrew, he realized this was Jean Mutsong's fiancée, who had sought him out before he could confront her. Holding back his anger, Shen Lang, accompanied by Li Chenxiu, approached Shueli and politely bowed to her. Shueli immediately showed a disgusted expression, cursing Shen Lang while gesturing for him to stay away from her. This action thoroughly infuriated Shen Lang as this woman insane? He then patted Li Chenxiu on the shoulder and said, Coachman, let's go. As they passed by Shueli, she hurriedly jumped away as if touching them would infect her with a disease. At that moment, Shen Lang activated his X-ray vision towards Shueli, and in an instant, he had an idea. Shueli, watch how I deal with you. Shortly after, Shen Lang checked into an ordinary inn. In his room, he set up an array of bottles and jars on the table. Soon, he found a bottle of castor oil extract. The entire castor plant is poisonous, and even touching its leaves can cause countless blisters to form on the skin. A accompanied by unbearable itching, making one wish to peel off their flesh. The blisters would continuously break and regrow until the skin scabs over and peels off, revealing new skin, thus ending the agony. This substance would neither leave scars nor endanger life, making it perfect for dealing with Shueli. Next, it was time for Shen Lang to implement his plan. He went to the largest silk shop in the area and spent a significant amount of money to have a pair of underwear identical to Shueli's made in the shortest possible time. Back at the inn, Shen Lang applied the cast or leaves to the underwear and even spring sprinkled rose essence to mask the odor. With everything ready, the question was how to deliver it without arousing suspicion. Suddenly, he turned to Li Chenxiu, who was drinking tea. Senior Sword King, you said you owed me a favor. Does that still stand? Without hesitation, the Sword King nodded. Shen Lang then revealed a mischievous smile. Senior, can you help me switch Shueli's underwear with this pair? That would be using your favor. Hearing Shen Lang's request, Li Chenxiu spit out the water he was drinking. Damn, is my favor as the Sword King so worthless? This promise could save your life at a critical moment. And you, Shen Lang, Lang, are asking me, the Sword King, to do such a sneaky act? Seeing Li Chenxiu hesitate, Shen Lang immediately launched into his dramatic performance. Senior, I know this request puts you in a difficult position, but with Shueli surrounded by skilled protectors, you're the only one who can accomplish this task, but it's okay if you refuse. After all, accompanying you to the south was entirely voluntary on my part. You don't need to feel you owe me anything. I will still do my best to treat your wife when we return. Don't feel burdened. As for the maliciousness of this woman from the Shue family, you know it well, and 
insulting me tonight is a minor matter, but I've found out they came from the direction of mythical Turtle City, clearly for the purpose of calling off the engagement. This is nothing less than trampling on the dignity of my father-in-law's entire family. Just as Shen Lang was about to continue, Li Chanxiu interrupted him. You've put it that way, Shen Lang. It would indeed be unreasonable for me not to agree. Then, he used the hilt of his sword to pick up the underwear, and, in the next second, vanished like a ghost. Half an hour later, as Shen Lang was reading, a damp pair of underwear landed on the table. Picking up the underwear, Shen Lang couldn't help but admire. The Sword King is really efficient. As for this pair of underwear, let's air it out and give it to Jean Musong as a gift. Having completed the mission, Li Chanxiu felt a weight lifted off his shoulders, looking forward to a good night's sleep. Yet, just as he dozed off, he dreamt his wife slapped him fiercely, scolding him for engaging in such a despicable act and threatening to divorce him. This terrifying nightmare woke Li Chanxiu up instantly, and he decided he had to send Shen Lang back at the earliest opportunity, without any delay. Meanwhile, Su Chanxian, whom Shen Lang had sent to infiltrate, was diligently sweeping with her broom at her work post, sweeping like this every day. I won't even get to see Chiu Xiaowe's face. Meanwhile, the pirate king Chiu Tianwei was personally leading an army of 5,000, along with a fleet of ships, towards the Isle of Gold Mountain. His ambition was grand, to first swallow the Isle of Gold Mountain, and then capture Cliff Watch Island. The next morning, the underwear thief Li Chanxiu, along with Shen Lang, had already set off on their return to the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. Suddenly, they heard the sound of galloping horses from behind. Turning back, they saw the cavalry escorting Shuelli. The leading female guard shouted menacingly, Out of the way, you mangy cur. Then, she haughtily led the troops away, stirring up dust that Shen Lang inadvertently breathed in. He wondered, Isn't this road leading to mythical Turtle City? Hasn't Shuelli already been there? Shuelli's troops made a surprising return, specifically to pass by Shen Lang again, with the lead guard repeating, Out of the way, you mangy cur. Shen Lang was astonished. Are they insane? Did they really make a round trip just to tell me to get out of the way and to humiliate me by making me move aside? How does such a tyrannical woman manage to live? After humiliating Shen Lang, Shue Li and her entourage returned to the capital. Every night, Shue Li insisted on staying in the best room of the official inns, driving everyone else out of the courtyard. Three days passed quickly, and Shue Li once again wore the underwear prepared by Shen Lang, settling down for the night. In the middle of the night, Shue Li felt an indescribable discomfort in her dream. Suddenly waking up, she felt an intense itch. She quickly got up, lifted the covers to check, and gasped at the sight of her condition. The next second, her screams echoed through the inn. Hearing the screams, her female guard rushed in to check on her mistress. Shuelli hurriedly dismissed her, claiming she had just had a nightmare. However, Shuelli was now in a panic. Despite her arrogance, she wasn't foolish. I haven't done anything. How could I contract such ailments? This must not get out, or my future with the Jing family is ruined. She decided to return to her family immediately to seek treatment from the female physicians. Without a moment's delay, she ordered her horse readied for the return to Marshall Peace City. In the following days, Shuelli was in so much pain that it was unbearable, not to mention riding a horse. Even sitting in a carriage was torture. She was in pain and itchy, but she had to endure it and dared not expose it. The journey was bumpy, and she could not rest for several days in a row. By the time she arrived at Marshall Peace City, she was haggard and had lost more than 10 pounds. In front of the gate of Mythical Turtle Count's mansion, Li Chinchio finally brought Shen Lang back to the Mythical Turtle Count's mansion. After exchanging a few polite words, he left Mythical Turtle City as quickly as possible, ignoring Shen Lang's retention. Done. It seems I've been disliked by the Sword King. Just back in the mansion, Shen Lang immediately heard the good news that Chiu Tianwei had led troops to Isle of Gold Mountain. Then, Shen Lang asked the mythical turtle count to quickly gather 2,000 soldiers to head to Isle of Gold Mountain, but they were only to put on a show and not really fight. Next, Shen Lang started to plan other small schemes. Now it's time to initiate the Cliff Watch Island strategy. Su Chan Chan, you can't let me down. Shen Lang went to Jin Mutsong's study. Jin Mutsong, who was writing vigorously, was suddenly startled by the underwear thrown in front of him, turning his head and seeing it was from his brother in he immediately expressed his thanks, but then he told Shen Lang that he had already quit. How long have you quit? 17 hours. Shen Lang cheekily leaned into Jin Mutsong's ear and said, These belong to Shueli. Hearing the name Shueli, Jin Mutsong immediately jumped up excitedly, but the next second, he carefully asked Shen Lang, Brother-in-law, you didn't cuckold me, did you? Shen Lang really wanted to slap him to death. Do I look like someone who lacks women? After the two joked around, Jin Mutsong turned back to writing, Brother-in-law, no more chatting. I need to start studying. Shen Lang was puzzled by Jin Mutsong sudden change of character and moved closer to see. Aren't these the treatises and poems I gave him? The conflict over Isle of Gold Mountain is over. Why is he still copying these? Jean Mutsong replied with determination, Brother-in-law, if I don't start putting in effort, I'll never get married. So, I plan to take the imperial examination. I want to pass the exam and become a scholar like Tang Yun. Shen Lang hurriedly advised him, you're going to inherit the Count's mansion, with all its wealth and luxury. Don't make life harder for yourself by choosing such a difficult path. However, Jean Mutsong explained, if I pass the imperial examination,
examination and become a scholar, surely some girls will see my talents and fall in love with me. Shen Lang was dumbfounded by this unexpected response. People take the imperial exams to become officials, and you're doing it for the girls? So, brother-in-law, please get me more articles, ideally, seven to eight hundred treatises and a few thousand poems. If I don't pass this time, I'll try the next. I refuse to believe I can't succeed even once. Why don't you use that determination to write your own articles? Brother-in-law, how can you say such silly things? How could someone as dumb as me produce any articles? Count Jean Hai personally visited the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, willingly handing over the Isle of Gold Mountain contract to the mythical Turtle Count. Two days later, the Earl of Mythical Turtle led 2,000 private soldiers, 200 metallurgists, 800 miners, and boarded dozens of ships to take over the Isle of Gold Mountain. Tang Yun, the heir of Count Jean Hai's mansion, personally accompanied them. On the deck, Shen Lang and Tang Yun began their respective performances. Shen Lang, after complimenting Tang Yun, said, The Jean and Tang families have been allies for generations. Now that misunderstandings are cleared up, it's time for our families to let bygones be bygones. From now on, let's renew our friendship and unite as brotherly families. What do you say? Hearing Shen Lang's words, Tang Yun, despite his disdain, nodded and agreed. Then, Shen Lang brought up that his family's heir, Jean Mutsong, was unmarried, and the Tang family also had a daughter of marriageable age. He suggested using this opportunity to form a marriage alliance and continue the centuries-old friendship. Tang Yun was secretly delighted. Who doesn't know that Jean Mutsong and the legitimate daughter of the Marshal Peace Count, Shuelli, had a marriage arrangement, but Shen Lang's statement clearly indicated that the engagement was now dissolved. Thinking this, Tang Yun stated, marriage is a significant matter. I will convey this to my father once we return. At this moment, Jean Hui came over and said, we have arrived at the Isle of Gold Mountain. Jin Lang went to the bow and looked forward. Not far away was the contested Isle of Gold Mountain. Following this, the mythical Turtle Count ordered all craftsmen and miners to start preparations for formally taking over the Isle of Gold Mountain's mines and smelting plants. As the ship docked, all the workers began to disembark onto the island. Tang Yun was sneakily looking around, trying to spot where Chiu Tianwei's pirates were hiding. Suddenly, a series of noisy shouts came from not far away, followed by thousands of pirates armed with machetes rushing down from the hills. Leading the pirates was not Chiu Xiao, but Chiu Tianwei's adopted son, the fourth most notorious figure of Furious Tide City, Chiu Hao. Seeing this, the Tang family's warriors immediately drew their swords in preparation for battle. However, the arrogant Chiu Hao did not take these warriors seriously and quickly dispatched one with a swing of his blade. Tang Yun was shocked. Wasn't it agreed that they would kill the warriors of the mythical Turtle Count? Standing on the ship, Shen Lang feigned confusion. Tang Yun, wasn't the Isle of Gold Mountain already handed over to the Jin family? Why are there so many pirates here? Tang Yun, standing on the shore, also pretended to be innocent, claiming he knew nothing about the situation and had not expected the pirate Xiu Tianwei to be so despicable as to occupy the island. He then theatrically shouted at the pirates, This island has been transferred to the Jin family. You pirates, leave at once. Xiu Hao burst into laughter upon hearing this. You should know, nothing that falls into the Chiu family's hands has ever been returned. The mythical Turtle Count, upon hearing this, became furious and demanded Xiu Hao to summon Xiu Tianwei for a confrontation. However, Xiu Hao didn't take the mythical Turtle Count seriously, mocking him as a defeated subordinate of his adoptive father, unworthy of negotiation. Shen Lang, pretending to be forcefully restrained, said, Xiu Hao, you pirates daring to brazenly seize the Isle of Gold Mountain is an act against the Yu Kingdom. Aren't you afraid of the Sovereign's wrath? Xiu Hao provocatively replied, Mythical Turtle Count, your Sovereign would rather see you dead. If you're capable, lead your troops to fight us. Win, and the Isle of Gold Mountain will belong to the Jin family. Seeing Xiu Hao's despicable and shameless behavior, and with thousands of pirates behind him, the mythical Turtle Count and Shen Lang were infuriated yet powerless. At this moment, Xiu Hao grabbed a miner, arrogantly shouting his thanks for the generous gift from the Jin family, claiming the several hundred soldiers, miners, and craftsmen as his own, mockingly thanking the Earl of Mythical Turtle. The Mythical Turtle Count, shaking with anger and ready to retaliate, was interrupted by the sound of war drums. Realizing the danger, Shen Lang exclaimed, This is bad. That's the pirate fleet. It's a trap. We need to retreat quickly. The Mythical Turtle Count, setting aside his anger, immediately ordered, set sail, full speed back. But the ships were too slow. Shen Lang hurriedly called Jin Hui, instructing him to throw useless items into the sea to lighten the ships. Instantly, countless supplies and materials were tossed overboard. Chiu Hao, standing on the shore, waved and laughed mockingly, thanks to the mythical Turtle Count, not only manpower but also supplies. What a great benefactor indeed. Listening to Chiu Hao's words, the mythical Turtle Count was so angry that his face turned red, and he almost bit his back teeth to pieces. Unable to hold back any longer, he cursed, you Chiu family wait and see, I will report to the sovereign and have you eradicated. After saying this, he spewed a mouthful of blood and collapsed, causing Shen Lang and others to panic and rush to help him into the cabin. As the ships of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion sailed away, boisterous and raucous laughter 
echoed from the dock. While Chiu Hao was basking in his own triumph, Zhang Chunhua approached. Seeing her, Chiu Hao disdainfully said, Miss Zhang, the mythical Turtle Count's mansion was utterly powerless. Zhang Chunhua remained silent. Inside the cabin, the mythical Turtle Count was rinsing his mouth. Yes, everything, including the spitting of blood, was fake. Shen Lang came forward and complimented, Father-in-law, your acting is superb. However, the mythical Turtle Count shook his head, disliking deception the most. Although the workers left behind were only temporarily hired, he was still very concerned. Shen Lang comforted him, Father-in-law, to make the act more convincing, some sacrifices are necessary. The enemies will only make them do hard labor, and we can rescue them in just over a month. Moreover, Father-in-law, you need to continue pretending to be sick. Even from your sickbed, you must keep submitting petitions to the Sovereign, requesting him to dispatch troops to suppress these pirates. This news spread quickly throughout the Yu Kingdom in just a few days. Despite winning the Isle of Gold Mountain conflict, after Jin Zhuo's retreat from the Isle of Gold Mountain, everyone felt that the Jin family was doomed. Upon returning home, the Earl of Mythical Turtle, Jin Zhuo, fell ill. From his sickbed, he wrote several memorials to the Sovereign, each more pitiful and lamentable than the last. The Sovereign, outwardly furious, immediately decreed a rebuke to Chiu Tianwei, ordering him to withdraw from the Isle of Gold Mountain. However, after the decree was issued, Chiu Tianwei simply ignored it, and the Sovereign showed no further interest in pursuing the matter. Thus, the situation was left unresolved, and the mythical Turtle Count's mansion, having just won the Isle of Gold Mountain conflict, was once again in a precarious state, like a candle flickering in the wind. However, Zhang Chong didn't feel victorious. Instead, he sensed a significant problem with the defeat of the mythical Turtle Count's mansion. At this time, an envoy from the Hidden Origin Society, Xu Tingyu, came to visit, with the purpose of formally demanding repayment of a colossal debt from 20 years ago. He presented a list detailing all the amounts due, including interest, demanding a one-time payment of 700,000 in debt. However, the mythical Turtle Count's mansion was facing a financial crisis, and the mythical Turtle Count was already weak. Facing this enormous debt worsened his condition. Jean Mulan pleaded softly, Envoy Xu, over the past 20 years, we have repaid 1 million gold coins, doing our utmost. Currently, the total gold coins owned by my entire family do not exceed 20,000. It's impossible for us to come up with 700,000 gold coins. Shen Lang also lowered his pride to bow and implore Xu Tingyu, asking for a year's extension on behalf of the centuries-old friendship between the Hidden Origin Society and his family to make some preparations. However, Xu Tingyu still wore his deceptive smile, I sympathize with your family's plight, but I am powerless in this matter. Jean Mulan cried out, Xu Tingyu, do you intend to drive us to death? Do you want to watch as my entire Jean family hangs themselves? Xu Tingyu sneered, you have one month to repay the 700,000 gold coins according to the contract. Otherwise, our Hidden Origin Society will have no choice but to take back Cliff Watch Island, which you have mortgaged. We have already lost the Isle of Gold Mountain, and now you want to take Cliff Watch Island as well. I would rather die than hand over Cliff Watch Island. Facing Shen Lang's accusation, Xu Tingyu didn't deny it, but simply responded with a smile. The contract was clearly written. If we don't receive 700,000 in a month, it will be up to the Sovereign to decide. However, Shen Lang, you've always been quite capable. Perhaps you really can gather this sum within a month. With that, he left amid their angry stares. After Xu Tingyu left, Jean Mulan sighed in relief. Seeing Mulan's perfect cooperation, Shen Lang couldn't help but embrace and kiss her, ignoring his seriously ill father-in-law. Although they had fooled Xu Tingyu, Jean Mulan was still worried about gathering 700,000 gold coins in a month. Shen Lang mysteriously took Mulan's hand and said, Wife, let's make a bet. If I can earn 700,000 gold coins within a month, will you take the initiative to sleep with me? He wrote these words in the palm of her hand. 